Hello, YouTube. Zach the Fiend Aconite here. And... Not for real. This is my way of making fake weapons for cosplay, student films, whatever hell, uh, whatever have you. Obviously, this isn't the superior way, since they're obviously not foam and therefore not safe for literally any situation, uh, especially if major stunts are required, but hey, they don't retract either, so uh, there's that. Take, take that however you will. To the throat, to the face, to the... No. But it's a very easy method, since I'm noticing a lot of uh, horror movies even don't really get much of a budget to work with. No one really respects the genre. They never did, and I don't think even now anyone specifically does, but this method will work for literally any weapon of any size, whether you want to make a scalpel or that pig splitter you just saw. Literally all you even need is a piece of chipboard and some imagination. And there's obviously different ways to do this. The general idea is that you make it out of cardboard and then do paper mache over it. And, um, yeah. It's pretty anticlimactic, honestly. And you could literally do this with any size of any weapon. This is a kitchen knife that I use for my Jeff the Killer costume. And a Cenobite hook that I never really did use, but still kind of showed off for... My Chatterer costume that won me uh, a gift card on Amino. And then, of course, we have the uh, actual full-size pig splitter, uh, which is... Um, it, it's got an equivalent with the with a chunk taken out of it, just so you can put it wherever, you know? Make it look all gnarly. I'm sure if you've seen Odin makes, he did something similar with foam, but... I like to use cardboard just because, A, it's free, where I get it at least, and B, um, it's just fun. Man, it's just good, clean fun, and that's ideally what any horror experience would be uh, in terms of especially fictitious horror. We uh, we don't talk about real horror for the most part around here on this channel, so yeah. take it to the comments if you can. But... um. Obviously, this isn't a one-size-fits-all type method for literally every prop of every size because um, what works for this scalpel will not work for um, the pig splitters because this is nothing but chipboard and paper mache. I think I also added a little super glue here towards the part where the blade and the handle meet. And... Uh, yeah, that's just reinforcement to make sure it doesn't bend around. You also put it on the tip so that it doesn't bend or curve or even fray and separate it, the layers of paper that make up the chipboard. And you pretty much do that for all the smaller knives as well. This is reinforced with um, super glue here and here, just on both sides as well as the tip, same as the Cenobite hook. But like I said, it's not the same every time because this handle is made of nothing but more chipboard that I hot glued and taped into place. Whereas something more rounded like this handle is actually corrugated cardboard that you kind of have to use a dowel or a paintbrush handle. You just rub it rounded. Like a, it, it's, you rub one out basically and uh, you uh, force it into shape with some tape and then you cover it with the paper and glue. I personally use brown paper that comes in a roll over at the Dollar Tree. But, um,. Yeah, it's really one of those deals if you get what you pay for. You can use newspaper for this, but it's just too flimsy. And then for the pig splitter, um, what you do is, um, what I did at least, was I used a popsicle stick. You could use two, but I used one uh, with, and this is all corrugated cardboard, but it's all um, similarly to the kitchen handle knife or whatever. It's all rounded off and taped into place. But, um, yeah, you gotta use painter's tape for this or else the glue won't stick. I also added a funny little lanyard here with some rope. Which, that's actually how I keep these. I just kind of hang them over there on the wall. And, 
It also helps if you've got a shitload of glue to work with all the time, which I do. As well as a dish and rubber spatula to apply the actual paper itself. It's good up to um, roughly about two or three layers, maybe more if you really want it to last. But like I said, with this paper that I use, it's just, um, it's good, it's good stuff. It's almost like chipboard itself once it dries. So, uh, really the only, uh, secret to making the fake blood look as real as it is, is, uh, instead of using acrylic paint, which is, uh, mostly what I do for especially the, um, bigger props, just cause what I actually, yeah, I'll, I'll get to that in a second, but the fake blood, first of all, is just nail polish, since it dries like enamel and very glossy, uh, glossy, but without the hassle of sticking to everything like glue. So, um, one thing I also do differently is for the smaller knives, especially you could do this with the pig splitters, but it would be expensive, uh, is, uh, with smaller knives, the scalpel, especially I actually used silver nail polish to make it silver. Now you could use spray paint for that, but I still have yet to find one personally that works uh, to the level of metallic, um, would sheen be the right word? Metallic sheen? Uh, that suffices for my uh, desires here, but that's how I do it. Let me know if you plan on making any of these yourself, because they're just that fun. And it really doesn't matter what you're cosplaying as, you can just make these to make them. If you like, please like. Feel free to share obscure little thoughts in the comments below as well as to share the video itself. Subscribe if you wish to see more. Don't forget to hit the bell if you do. And as always, thank you so very much for watching. And I love you all.